All right. Ready to get started? More Kerbal Space Program. Today, we build and test a moon rocket. Because why not? We've unlocked all the things I think we need. Now I want to build something. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to... Um, Try and do this fairly intelligent. I'm trying to I'm gonna try and do this land out. So we have an existing lunar transfer rocket that we know works. It's pretty good. Okay, that's what I thought. Very little. Zero two five. Perfect. Whoop. Disabled my chat again. There we go. That's better. All right. So we know that this rocket works in the staging configuration that we have. And it works for a three-ton payload. We tested it. Um, it does fall a little bit short, but the mission profile works out perfectly. So that's ideal. So 27.241. I'm actually going to do maths today. We're going to do this mathematically. Just for my own sanity. There we go. I might be an echo here. Possibly. There we go. Anyway. So, 27.241 tons. So total mass at stage start, say at stage three. All right. Now we need to add three tons for a three ton payload. Let's see. So first stage, where things are going to get a little tricky. First stage, we've got two hammer boosters. So we're looking at, um, let's see, we want at sea level, because this is going to be on the ground, 197.897. Fuel consumption per second, 15.827. Don't worry, we're going to multiply this and fix all this in just a minute. Fuel capacity in units. This has 375 units of fuel at 2.81 mass. Two of those boosters. Whoops. Okay. 
All right. So just the, those boosters alone, that's where we're at. However, we also have this guy going. So what we want to do, we want to actually plug these numbers into the stage one configuration for just a second. So I can check the stage one simulation. I haven't built the stage three simulation tab yet on this. So we get 23.69 seconds of fuel burn. So I can just call it, I can round up, I can call it 24 seconds of burn, right? So we need to figure out 24 seconds of this and split it off from everything else, which I could have just looked right here at fuel time per second, but I'm silly today, apparently. I just don't pay attention. So, now, we want to look at the Reliant engine, which has a thrust to sea level of 205.161. I'm going to start filling this in on the line above it. We're going to end up adding this in afterwards. But once it burns off, there's still um, more time with fuel, so we'll plan that out as well. Uh, you do also get these two thud boosters. And mind you, this is actually, I forgot, this is limited to 80%. I figured an 80% thrust limiter was, was wise. It did seem to help. So I'm just going to go with it. So that's, that's what we've got for that one means that our fuel consumption rate, 7.105, and we can go ahead and calculate in, again, to the 80% uh, the thrust limiter is going to be 80% fuel consumption as well. So, now we start looking at fuel tanks. How much fuel will it take to drive this for... Well, first off, stage start is going to be the same, so I'll add that in in a second. Fuel mass at start... Hmm. I'll have to reverse engineer this. Let's go back to the thuds. Let's just get all this in one shot. So at sea level, 108.197. Total thrust. Fuel consumption is much lower though, 3.611. These are at full thrust limiter. There's two of them. Now we can add these, 12.906. Three eighty five two two eight. Okay, so that's that's our thrust value. And again, we're gonna end up adding this in in just a second. But I need to figure out exactly how we're gonna do that. I really didn't design this with uh, multiple engine fires in mind, but we'll figure that out. So, at a fuel consumption rate, 12,906. So that's per second, time the amount of seconds. We're going to spend 305.79 units of fuel. So we're going to actually go ahead and put that. That's one way to reverse engineer that. That works. So that's how many units of fuel we're going to consume while we're also firing stage 3 boosters. So now we've got an equal fuel time here. Now we need fuel mass, so we need to figure out how much that weighs. So I'm going to assume, let's not do that, let's figure out, okay, 
between all the tanks. This one. Let's see, 405. So total mass between liquid fuel and oxidizer. So liquid fuel and oxidizer will be 449 tons for 405 units of liquid fuel. Oh, did I just say 4? Well, I just didn't pay attention. 4.49. Okay. That's your mass. And that's for 405 units of fuel. So now we want a waste uh, weight per unit. So that's our weight per unit of fuel. So we're gonna take this times that. So our fuel mass at stage starts, so how much we're going to burn through over the course of this burn while the boosters are attached is here. And total mass at stage start will be the same. We're going to go through, it's going to say have the same starting point and it's going to consume all that fuel. Now I'm just going to double check these other tanks and make sure that that same fuel weight is consistent. So again, uh, we've got 198 units of liquid fuel now, so 198. And that weighs between liquid fuel. No, no, please. There you go. Right. Can, can you do? Can you please do the right bumper thing? There you go. All right. So this one will be one. Let me see. One point three. So one brain can't work right now. So two point three. No, I mean two point two. Sorry. 2.2 tons. So we're going to check. It's actually not the same. Okay. And then we're going to check this one. So 99 units of fuel. I'm learning something new here. 1.09. I figured these would be the same. I figured this was just... Um, Sanity check. Yeah, that's that's weird. This is a more f efficient weight wise. That's messed up. Weight per unit. And then we gotta check this uh, adapter unit. 72 units of fuel. That is crazy. And this is going to be a mass of 0.8. See, these two are the same. So what we'll do... units of fuel. Bingo. Now we're going to say that times the 30579 units of fuel actually gives us this. Because that mattered oh so very much. That tiny infinitesimal difference. Now, now we start doing a little more craziness. Now we need to combine these two things. Well, first off, yeah. Let's just go ahead and do that. So combine those two lines. All this has a purpose, guys, I promise. We're designing rockets. Alright, so this is going to be the total first stage. Now, I already have 
the next data here that we're going to work off of. And I just had some of that data in front of me that I should not have deleted, but that's just fine. We'll go through it one more time. Just call it a learning exercise. So everyone, everyone else knows what's going down here. So again, we have this adapter. This is going to be 72 units of liquid fuel. We don't need to calculate the oxidizer because the consumption rate uh, over the course of the total tonnage is going to be the same percent wise, so we can get away with that. So that's going to be 0.8 tons of fuel. Then we have this guy, which is 99. guy, which is 2.2 for units of fuel, and then this one, which is 405 units of fuel at 4.49. I expect everyone in the class to be taking notes. So again, that's our total fuel and total fuel weight in that stage. So now what we want to do, actually, real quick, make this adjustment. Because these were actually adding weight. Two, six, eight, four, one. Very precise. And for any issues that I might have made here, any boo boos. I'm just going to add these in just for weight for a second. got to be totally accurate. So with a three ton payload, it would weigh almost 30 tons at launch. Anyway, now, how much fuel does this now leave us with? Well, I left this here. We had 305.79 units of fuel getting consumed over the course of this first stage. So you want to take the total units of fuel So we're going to take 774 minus the fuel capacity that we consumed on the first stage. So that's actually going to end up replacing that right there. Then Take the sum of the tonnage minus the fuel tonnage here, and that's how much we have. That's how much we have left at the start of that stage. Yeah, now I'm done with that. So this is again boosters and the first stage. This is the leftover fuel of the first stage and let's see everything else is nice and average together we have our stage delta V here now the rest of this stage what we do want to consider is after these boosters get separated this towers off so after the boosters get fired off, what's the weight going to be? 19.566 minus, again, 0.025. So 
19.525. So 19.541 is going to be the starting mass, right? Minus, we got to go through all the fuel that we took out here, which again, I just screwed myself on that. So 19.541, we're going to remember. So that would be our starting if we had full fuel. We're going to take that and we're going to subtract the fuel that we already burnt out of that first stage. Which, that didn't just work. Okay. Oh, because I'm... Okay. You, uh... You going to calculate there? I know you want to calculate. Sure, it'll calculate there. We'll just go ahead and take that. So this is really our starting mass at the start of first stage only with boosters separated. So we get fuel time of 36 seconds at that point. So first 23.69 seconds is uh, boosters and first stage. Next 36.27 seconds. And stage delta V going away. Please calculate. Do it. Calculating formulas. God, I thought I was slow. All right. Well, while it's doing that, while it's trying to keep up with our insanity, my insanity, we're going to move on to the very simple stage now. Now, once that's done, this stage is off. Now we have a mass of six. Oh, huh. Forgot one thing here. Add the three ton payload back in. So plus three tons. Before I forget to do that, we had a mass of 6.603. So that's our start. We're going to then reduce that. by the size of this tank, the weight of this tank. That is not part of the rocket. Then, we're gonna add the three ton payload to it. So 6.578, so that'd be 9.578. Let's just jump to it, 9.578. Get rid of that crap. Now, this one's a little easier for fuel. We've only got two tanks. So we've got 360 units of liquid fuel. And 45 units of liquid fuel. We've got a weight of four tons. good portion of the, uh, the weight of the stage. And then this one is 0 0.49. 0 0.49 tons. Just out of curiosity. Well, that's, that is a lot more efficient. Anyway, so our fuel mass at stage start is 4.49. That's how much fuel is there. Fuel capacity in units is 405. Now we need to go back to the engines for the swivel. Now, at this point, we'd be high enough in the atmosphere, we'd want to then start using a vacuum number. That's the most efficient number, that's what we're going to use. So we're going to say 215 for its thrust here, and then its consumption rate, 6.166 units of fuel per second. And there you go. You got your specific impulse, 
It's much higher than that last stage. You can see the the second stage, the, or the first stage rather, without boosters. It's more efficient than the first stage with boosters, which makes sense because solid fuel rockets are not that effective at a specific impulse. They're just very high thrust. And we have now our total delta V for the rocket, uh, 3,564, which makes sense because it's we're getting more than orbit out of it, and orbit should be at 3,400 for even the worst case scenario, even if you fly it terribly. So this looks pretty spot on. So the reason I'm doing all this, I'm figuring out first what we can do to replicate this flight pattern. This flight pattern works well, so we want to mimic this flight pattern with a larger payload. So keep this going. We're going to say a payload bus of three tons, even though that's an uh, artificial number. I'm just going to roll with it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out, let's say, one of our satellites that I know we've, we've sent. Our newest one. How about that? We know this one definitely. And I'm gonna, again, I'm going to count this as three tons, even though it's not three tons. Just so if we needed to put dead weight on there, we could, and we know it works, because that launcher has worked with three-ton payloads before. But we just want to get how much fuel would be on a, on a system like this. So let's see. Overall, we're powering this with a spark liquid fuel engine. So this guy has a vacuum thrust of only 20 fuel consumption rate of 0.574 liquid fuel and then fuel capacity we've got two Oscar B tanks on there so that's 36 plus we've got these baguette tanks 24.3 four of those so we've got 133.2 units of fuel. I seem to think there is more than that, but eh, whatever. 133.2. Alright, and then I'm just going to sanity check. We only have two Oscar B, right? Yeah, only two Oscar B tanks. We'll morph those back in later. I don't really care right now. Then, we need the fuel mass at stage start, so we need to go back and check what the mass of these are. Mass for here is 0.2, so between both we've got 0.4. Then here is 0.27, so equals 0.27 times 4, so 1.48. And you can see that has an absurd amount of delta V. That's really good. That's like more than the whole stage there. The difference there, of course, it's got a very low thrust, so it needs to get into space before it can start actually doing its thing. Now, I had a, a moment earlier where I was questioning how much more efficient this would be. But it is heavier. That's 0.4 tons. So I'm pretty sure the weight of this out, out balances the efficiency. And I can check that later. Maybe I will tonight. But not right now because I'm already giving you guys a lot of math. I'm throwing math at you guys. I'm sure that's not that much fun. So this is the flight pattern we want to match. We want to get something similar to this. Okay, we want to do like the same number of second burn, preferably, all that jazz. So, how do we do that? Now we go back, start new, and now I start working on a rocket. First though, I need to know what we're going to carry. So I'm going to start working on what the overall moon mission payload will look like. So we can put docking port on there. It's actually, this isn't going to bother me. 
I'm gonna try and do this semi-Apollo style. Like if Apollo and Gemini had a um, disgusting baby. Now I am going to not launch in this configuration, so I'm not gonna worry about this being upside down. But when I launch, this will be underneath it again, semi Apollo style. But right now I just care about the weight. I care about how much this is going to weigh. I'm not really worry too much about everything else. So we're gonna want a lander can. We're gonna want a fuel tank. We're gonna want a terrier engine. This is where higher thrust will come in handy when you're fighting gravity. It's more fuel efficient to have a higher thrust when you're fighting gravity, like you will be on, on descent. Because you're fighting gravity for less time. Um, then let's see. What else are we gonna want? We're obviously going to need fuel. That's better. First we need a heat shield. Which I don't, oh, I don't have the right size heat shield. Yeah, I'm gonna have to unlock that. That's not good. We'll figure that out in a second. Actually, there is a way around that. I'll, I'll consider that. I'll think about how we want to do this. So, we're just going to say that's a stand-in for now. I know it'll probably weigh more. But we'll see what we can do this stream to unlock it. That's an oversight. That's why we plan these things out. Okay, no shroud version of the wolfhound. And then... We're gonna want, and again, not a final design. Don't worry if it's ugly. We're gonna want some of those. We're gonna want some monoprop fuel tanks. Which I don't have a ton of options, but we'll just say four of these will do fine. That should be relatively functional. We'll need um, an antenna. This look a little more Apollo. Oh, that deploy. Oh, that looks stupid when it deploys. Doesn't that? It's, um... Why do I care? Wait a minute. That's right. This is not. This is not a real vehicle. I'm gonna calm down there. But anyway. So that should be the command module I want to use. That'll get our Kerman there. And here. And again, the important thing is just getting the weight right right now so I can figure out the launcher. And I will finalize this later. That will do fine. There we go. And we're going to need landing legs. Three of those. Okay. And we're going to want batteries of some kind. So four of those. Solar panels. We want some way to communicate. So one of those, just so we can talk to the capsule above it and then back into the relay network. What else do we really need? Science, of course. Two of those. 
of those. Well, you know, I might be able to just get away with one of these. Because I've already taken some, some of the ones around there, and I'll be able to reset them if I use a scientist. So like that. That's good. Oh, this is... There we go. So we're looking about 13.5 tons. So 13.5 tons. This will be almost what it'll look like. This is just a uh, very rough version. Um, also, we need parachutes. Let me just go ahead and throw those in. Just so I know that these are significantly heavier. Those, put us in the drogue. Yeah, so we'll say closer to 14 tons. Oh, I actually do have lights. I want a pair of lights. Ways more. We're the same. Okay. Pair of lights for landing. So yeah, we'll say 14 tons or so is what this will this will weigh. So if I can make a 15 ton launcher, we'll say that that's totally good. I'm just not even gonna save this. We'll we'll do it properly later. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the, all this jazz. We're gonna copy it below. Here we go. We say 15 tons. So everything we do after that's going to be adding 15 tons. So again, an Oscar B tank, just because it's small. Probably start with a slightly larger tank for this. Because I am going to need this diameter. I didn't put the fairing on the other thing too. So yeah, I'm going to need I'm going to need more than 15 tons. Let's just think of it that way. As many as possible. Let's target for. Let's make it an 18 ton launcher. We need some safety margin here. Uh, then we're going to want. Larger adapter. This is a smaller adapter. We're gonna want one of those. That looks good. That's gonna bring down to this size. Now we've got these as well, which I'm gonna want to do. Now this is where I'm gonna be taking things a little more seriously because this is going to hopefully be a final design if all goes well. I had an idea of what I wanted to do, and I'm just going to see how much I can roll with it. Because I kind of want... like an R7 clone. Smaller tank, like uh, this guy. Okay, yep, something like that looks good. So we have a limited choice of engines least ones that have anywhere near at sea level performance that we need. So, hmm. We'll put a swivel in the middle to be our sustainer. Actually, real quick, just for, just for shits and giggles, let's give this just a little... tank here. Just so we can keep the whole color theming going on. Wow, that doesn't give me an orange option. That stinks. Not this one. These. He 
Yeah. That looks okay-ish. Let's just skip that. Let's just see how this works like this. So again, a, um, a swivel in the middle. Yep, it is a swivel. We want reliance on the outside of it. So those will be our boosters. I'm going to fuel line this. Oh, they put it in with the fuel. Okay. Fuel line these. So the center tank ends up fully fueled when it goes to eject. Now, how to set up the staging on this. So. Now I need to consider all five engines of thrust with just the fuel from the four tanks because this is going to end up fully fueled. So, fuel from these tanks, it's going to be 540 fuel each fuel mass of six tons. said it was 140 units. That was 160. So start putting this down on the stage three. So you did that polar orbit with the MUN work? It did mostly. Um, I have a few remaining um, temperature nodes to get. Just a few. Alright, now this... This madness gives me a launch 45.308. Plus... I said our 18 ton payload target. So this would be a starting weight of 63.283 if we don't have any other stages. Because I'm considering that these two more or less could be one stage and then this would be the sustainer. If everything goes as I hope. We'll see here. So now fuel consumption per second. We've now got couple engines to worry about. We've got Reliance, or the big ones. So those are going to be at sea level because they're going to be the um, initial boosters here. So thrust ASL 205.161. 205.161. We've got four of those. And then we've got sea level thrust of 167.969. So total. That again. Intelligently. Total of 988.613. And this is something we can play with in a minute. With thrust limiters. Then we want to look at fuel consumption rates. So this is going to consume 7.105. You could use KER for these calculations. Yes, but I'm crazy. I, I really wanted to do the math. I don't know why. Um, then this guy, 6.166. So fuel consumption rate, 34.586 units per second. That is, that is a lot. Is that right? Did I do something wrong? Is that a point? No. It's about right. That's a lot. 34.586. So I 
fi I think we're gonna find ourselves uh, thrust limiting this. So, the delta V on that stage isn't quite what we want this to be. But let's check the next stage up and see if that um, see if that starts to line up with what I want. Math. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I, I was feeling like um, I was feeling like doing math today. So now, after that point, these separate off, and they will have fuel line pumping to this. So this will be fully fueled. Now, that would make this 12.888 tons. Minus 0.025 for the tiny Oscar B fuel tank that doesn't belong there. And plus 18 tons for our desired payload. So 30.863 total mass at stage start. Now we need the fuel mass. So let's see. We've got one of these tanks, so fuel mass there. You've got liquid fuel at 360, oxidizer 440, it does values. So that's four four tons? Yeah, four tons. Four tons there. Uh, you got this guy is two tons. That's starting to get more balanced out. Um, this guy is three tons. And then this guy, just to mess with us, is 1.09 tons. So total fuel mass at stage start will be 10.09 fuel units. 360. You only need liquid fuel units. Again, they're going to burn off at an even percentage for the total total uh, mass. Then this one's 180. And this guy is 170. And then this guy right here, 99, just to be a dick. So that's going to give us 909 units of fuel. Now we only have the one engine, which is a swivel. At that point, it'll be up in the atmosphere. So, or up out of the atmosphere, I should say. So we want uh, 215, we want vacuum level thrust. Fuel consumption per second is still 6.166. So that actually doesn't match our stage one, the one before it. So this, this is very short of our delta V that we had here carry an 18 ton payload. Now if I'm able to reduce my payload to 15 tons, right? So if we took this minus three, minus three, it would make a difference, but it wouldn't quite get us where we want. So at this point, that's where we need to start looking at a third stage. So now let's just take a look here. This is this is a better two stages for sure. So we don't need as much out of the next stage. Yeah, keep to this. However, the other concern is the amount of time we're spending. So while here, that first stage is about 60 seconds, so the first minute of flight is the first stage plus the first stage with the boosters. Here, it's a lot more. Wow. More than double. Hmm. It's going to take us a long time to get up to where we're at. So the extra, actually, the extra delta V is probably going to be lost, more or less, with us fighting gravity for twice as long. Right? It's going to really suck. And part of that's going to be because we're putting... This is kind of underpowered, to 
be going on its own. It's going to be basically a sustainer engine at this point. So now what we want to do, we want to start working on an upper stage. And to do that, we're going to have to add that weight into the weight of everything below it. So we're going to have to treat this separately for just a second. So the second stage that I want would be the wolfhound. Third stage, really. So that's all I would have to add to make that work right here. All right, so I'd have to add 7.678 tons. Now we're starting to get something similar in terms of delta V. It's getting a little closer here. Now, at stage start, this would come off. We're then looking at 7.588, actually. Didn't take out the Oscar B tank. So this would be 7.588 plus our 18 ton target payload plus or minus 0.25 for the Oscar B fuel tank. So that would be our new start point. Now our engine, the Wolfhound be thrust and vacuum of 375. So we can increase there. And fuel consumption rate of 8.353. Fuel capacity in units for this tank. 405. And fuel mass at stage start would be 2.49, or 4.49 rather. Yeah, 4.49. Yeah, it's much less than this stage that we ended up. So really, at this point, we would fall short of orbit. We would fall short of orbit with this to get 18 tons up. So we need to do something radically different, and it needs to be here where our thrust levels are high enough that we can actually get off the ground and do what we want to do. See how fast this burn is compared to the others, right? So if we want to keep that going, what we should do is add tanks to the bottom. So let's start with this guy. We'll add this to the bottom, start building this back up. Start modifying numbers. Soyuz-esque. So now what we want, put this guy in the center there. Those guys there. Now we get to do more math. Huzzah. Basically starting all over again, except the thrust values. So what we'd be adding, we'd be adding 198 times four units of fuel plus 99 times 4 units of fuel then 
a single one of these, which is 90 units of fuel, we'd be adding, let me see, that would be 2.2, 2.2, is that right? Yeah, 2.2. 2.2 times 4, which is 8.8, .8, I'll just add, put it in. Tons of fuel for these. Then 1.09 times 4 for those. And then this is just 1, it's an extra 1 ton. So on top of that, our new mass start. 68.935 Let's see, minus Oh, that's why ha, Minus 0.025 And we still have to add the 18 ton payload So, 86.91 New mass at stage start. Our new fuel mass at stage start would be 24 plus this right here. So we'd be at 38.16. Okay, fuel capacity in units would be 2160 plus all this would be 3438. So, now we'd have something that would be a little closer. 35.64 versus 32.25. Now, we also need to modify this one. Because at that point, we would see a little more fuel. Actually, I shouldn't have added this to it, should I? Hmm. Nope, we need to take one ton off. Made a boo-boo. Ton off here. The 90 units of fuel off here. Because um, we don't want to use that fuel yet. We want to stage it off and um, have a fully fueled center. So now, now I need to add that into this level. So we'll have an extra one ton of fuel, an extra 90 units of fuel capacity, making this 999 fuel units. This would also be 21.665 tons. Minus 0 0.025 plus the 18 ton payload for 39.64. 32.49 plus versus 35.64. So that's we're already getting pretty close now. Again though, my concern is how long the burn is because we're comparing a 125 second burn, a two minute burn, to a 307 second burn, so a five minute burn. So this will take two minutes to get to orbit, this will take five, which means it's fighting gravity a little longer, it's going a little slower. Now the other thing I can do is kind of generically minus 18 plus that. And so now I can change my payload on the fly. So now if I change my payload to 15, yeah, if I can get this down to a 15 ton payload, we'll be looking at almost the same delta V in a slightly different flight profile. This would be here, we're firing off the ground, we're staging into the gravity turn, we're getting the orbit stopping and then doing a uh, lunar transfer. Here we would be 
likely getting to orbit almost with this second stage and then staging this would be our lunar tran transfer so this would be our lunar transfer right here which works out pretty good actually I think so I think at that point I'm ready to put a test payload on this and and test this sucker out and stop boring you guys with math now that I'm already at the point where I'm saying this should theoretically do what I want it to do. So this would be a 15 ton booster, which again, I think I can get the payload down to that. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to save this as a sub-assembly. Let's, um, let's get some watchtowers on it too, just to say I did it. Okay. Set up the staging. So we fire those. Fire that. Then we would separate that, blow those off into a Coriolev cross. And we'd snap that off and we'd go here. Okay. So we can go ahead, we can take that as a sub assembly. So this would be a K-15, so Curb and Sphere of Influence, 15 ton, uh, G-1, Lunar Transfer, okay, now, not have one for our spacecraft. I need a larger heat shield. So let's see for a second here. Oh, I need to unlock it. And that would get me better landing struts too. And a launch escape system. I'm just going to be tempted to use all this stuff. Larger parachute. I'm going to just, like, hate the, my life for a second. So we need 90 science. So we need another 73. So I'm going to figure out something while I'm doing this to get more science. Uh -huh. In the meantime, temperature sa surveys of Mun. We don't have anything like that. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's see. Let's start to build a vehicle. Just something to test. Oh, we do have um, this two-man module. This is a two-man pod. Don't know if it handle a lunar re-entry. Well, we can test the vehicle out. I'm gonna go back to a test payload. So what what do we wanna do? What do we wanna do for a test payload? Sure, whatever. 
New root. Select everything. Select that. Okay, now I can pop that off as a as a assembly. So K three G two SPD stack. What I'll do take a big fairing. Throw that on it. Oh yeah, that's gonna get weird. Take that off for a second. I really don't have the smaller I have the smaller stack separator. Okay. Let's go with that. So, here's a test payload for you. Let's set up a uh, set up a comms network. Set up a whole comms network to uh, to help our Mooner mission, so we can set up our Mooner mission a little better while also testing our new rocket. How about that? Now it's not the full weight yet, but we're gonna add a uh, a mission fuel section to represent what we'd have on our actual lunar lander stack. And if this fails miserably, you know, we'll just have a very expensive thing that's blown up instead of, you know, killing a Kermit. So that's good. That's good, right? those on. I want a wolfhound because that's going to be basically all we're going to have. And perfect. That's 15.684 tons. So just a little more. A little more than what our lander is hopefully going to weigh. Probably close to what our total lunar stack is going to weigh. So our total lunar stack is probably going to weigh about the same as these three satellites, plus this uh, craziness. So I don't even know what to call this in terms of a payload. This I'm just not going to save this, I don't think, because this is insanity. But sometimes we just need to do uh, insanity, insanity here. Oh, cancel. Oh, trash that sucker. Don't want to delete my rocket I just made. Spent all this time making. Uh, no, nope. one actions. Here we go. Back to the separators. The uh, D18 decoupler. Here we go. Moon rocket. tall. This is going to be a nightmare. Some part of me just says this is going to like flop over and fail. And 
waste 43,599 credits. But we won't know till we try. So let's see, we're gonna throw all those engines in there. And while those are running, we're gonna run out of fuel in these four. We're gonna cut them loose. Keep going. Until we have to drop here at this stage. And we get a wolfhound. And we drop that off. And we drop this guy off. And we get another wolfhound. its engine. We want to move the fairing somewhere right here. And then we have a MUN launch test vehicle. And let's see what happens. Should probably test this somewhere other than KSC and just make sure it doesn't explode on the launch pad. But this is Dude I Called You Bro Space Program. This is what all that math was building up to, folks. This crazy thing. A bit of a wobble there. This is what I was worried about. It's just it does not seem to have a very good thrust to weight. Although it does seem to be picking up. So far, surprisingly steady. concern is going to be the next stage, pushing this entire stack with just one Reliant as a, uh, as a sustainer. to start driving Apogee. Of course I would do this at night. This is surprisingly stable. We are working the Apogee a little bit. We are actually slowing down a little bit. Just kind of coasting into it. As we expel our fuel, we should stop slowing down and start accelerating again. Yep, here we are. As 
wish I had something more powerful to throw uh, on that one bit. So this might not be the launch vehicle we go with, because it is kind of worrying me the extremely low thrust to weight ratio. Of course, I didn't bother to check that in my math. It's forcing us to have a very high angle of attack, which is wasting fuel over time. But that's kind of what I expected when I was looking at the math there. Because if you looked at it, like I said, you're, you're dealing with 300 seconds versus 120 seconds. Which just means there's that much more time where you're fighting vertical velocity um, that you don't need to if you complete your, your orbit in a timely manner. We're about to get into space. And then we can start driving... Um, More shallow orbit here. So there we go, right there. Now I can really start accelerating. Which we're still doing on this stage, so that's really not that bad. But where the math would suggest that um, this should almost get us to orbit, it's really just not getting us to orbital velocity at all. In fact, we're, we're losing uh, altitude again. So we're going to have to cut that off and go to the Wolfhound. Oh, that's done. Now we might need to just maintain, oh yeah, maintain a high angle of attack still. Which again, more time spent fighting the force of gravity instead of working on our, on our orbit, on our orbital velocity. Still. Yeah, we're almost done with supposed to be a lunar transfer stage. It's just because of all the fuel that we spent. Oh, that springs. Oh, that is uncomfortable how much that springs. Oh, that is wobbly. That is really wobbly. I've never used auto strut before. There we go. But I'm using real struts. So, I mean, that shouldn't be wobbly with real struts in there. Now, thankfully, these satellites all have a ton of um, fuel on them, so I should be able to accomplish independent missions with them. And this did turn out to be a pretty good 15-ton uh, orbital launcher. Well, not so much a lunar transfer. Warp time a little bit. Oh, and um, I'll have to deploy at least one of these antenna just to make sure we stay in contact. Three satellites, one rocket. Now, the good news out of this, as well, is this now isn't uh, cost-wise much of a failure in terms of um, getting satellites to orbit. 
because for 40, 45,000 credits, it's about what I'd, a, a little less than what I would pay to launch three satellites on their own individual rockets. So this wasn't a very extravagant expense after all to test this vehicle. Now, if you consider that we could have just not done this entirely and don't need these satellites, that's a whole other story. Because we kind of don't need these satellites. But, I wanted them for a polar communications network around uh, Mun. Since I did finally disable our extra tracking stations as well, And this stage can handle our transfer. So this will get us into, um, into lunar orbit. That's actually not, not so bad as a, uh, as a larger satellite launcher. This would be ideal, because then the debris would go flying back to Kerbin. Right here. So I'll have a 27 second burn coming up. Crazy and elaborate. I do only have 18 min minutes to maneuver. I actually should check on Munsat 1. Because I'm always checking on Munsat 1. Where is Munsat 1? Oh, there it is. Extremely tight orbit. Yeah, it's not coming across anything anytime soon. So I don't have to really worry about that. So instead, let's time warp to uh, my maneuver. Why not? Nope. Oh, so many things. So many things. I want to focus on Kerbin. How do I focus on Kerbin? Oh my god. So many things. Just so many things. Okay, let's start disabling views on this stuff. Um, um, launch sites. Uh, okay. Can I really just not focus on... There you go. Well, that was a that was a battle. Let's turn relays back on so I can at least see my relays. Ah, there's a far sat that's like all derpy here. I'm gonna have to rename that one. Nope. Nope. Stop making me pick things I don't want to pick. These are getting buggy. There we go. So we'll just ride out all the way to our maneuver. I can start getting this in position again to kind of slide out of position. And we want 14 seconds. There we 
go. We got a satellite trio heading towards Mun. We got our orbit exactly right because I do want this stage to uh, decay and return to Kerbin. Decay its orbit, rather. So the idea is I get it just close enough to the moon that I can slow down the satellites and get a burn to get them in orbit of the moon, but that it also tugs on this stage slightly and slows it down so that it smashes in the curb instead of orbiting there we go perfect now we do have a little bit of fuel left over that i mean we could theoretically help us do our braking for the moon as well Which isn't a terrible idea. Start extending all our antennas. So you can see here we are now, our orbit takes us into a moon encounter, and then if we don't do anything with it, we'll follow this course, sort of, it's like curling around the moon, it's, it doesn't really, not really clear what it's doing. Hello! I'm glad you joined. So now our space debris from this will fall back to Kerbin, a negative pair of apps once it encounters the moon. So far, we're doing a test payload on a test rocket to the moon. Uh, it did not go as well as I'd hoped, but we're still going to get our secondary mission of getting our comms network around the moon completed with this test flight, getting three satellites into um, different polar orbits. At least, hopefully it works. Now the question is, how long till para-apps maneuver? Can I plan out that far? I can't plan out that far. I got one day until Mun encounter. Make sure this points the whole satellite stack at the sun. struggling right now apparently let's do this let's spin it around are the three sets all the same they are indeed I took off all the science experiments from them I just gonna use them for uh, for com relay all right so that's on its way From Munsat 2, possibly Munsat 3, I might do Munsat 3, I should be able to watch our temperature gathering, Munsat 1. Which is in far too low a polar orbit to be any use at all down here. Um, but nevertheless is very good for... Uh, for our temperature gathering when it has net connection. 
That's been kind of annoying. Can you duplicate in the VIB or build each individually? You can actually, um, you can duplicate with the, um, sub-assembly. If you, there's a, one tab you can bring open, uh, which actually I might just click back to for the points of demonstration. I think I will. Oh. Space Center. As it also lets me point out, um, that I finally organized all my craft, more or less. There we are. So now, where I've got everything set up by different payloads, and this little tab right here, up at the top for advanced mode, lets you, um, Open up your sub assemblies. You can save sub assemblies and drop those in. So if I wanted uh, to take this three ton rated payload to, let's say, Keo synchronous orbit or Colnea orbit, I've got the Kerbin Sphere Influence three ton generation two launcher. And there you go. I'd be ready to go. So that way I can start to separate out um, my rockets, I don't have to save all these different combinations. I can just save the rocket itself, and the payload is the vehicle, and changing out the mission for a specific launch, it will be just this easy. Which, much easier. All right, now, collect this debris. Do a random check here. Yeah, nothing really going on there. Let's do a warp till morning, maybe? Perfect. Saves time, definitely it does. I recommend very highly to anyone uh, using that way to organize. Now, oh lord, do I have a lot of satellites. And our comnet is absolutely <laughs> absurd. I love my comnet. I did disable the ground tracking station, so there's only the one at KSC, but we have so many satellites, it really doesn't seem to matter. Although we are getting some weak signals going back to the moon because of that. Is that a little more interesting? But let's jump to Munsat 3. Munsat 1 is too low to the surface to time warp at an effective speed. Oh, my cat is chewing on. I have to jump on him there, but um, okay. We also want to check how far our test vehicle is. It's got a few hours. It's got two hours or so. So we don't want to warp too far. I just want to see if Munsat 1 comes across any more of these temperature scan zones. While also watching our test payload here. It's too far from this one, I know that. That one's an above rating that's too high for its current altitude. So we're really waiting on this one here. And since it's in a polar orbit, as this as the moon rotates around Kerbin, it will slide the orbit here. I'll be able to cover all over the moon, theoretically. So far it's been going iffy at best. Let's 
Look at all my beautiful satellites just doing their thing. Much comms, yes. Very much comms. What zone does it say it's flying through? This one? Oh, it says this is entering the zone. Oh! Oh ho ho! I should have been paying closer attention to that. I could have been getting, um... Do I even have a temperature scanner on this, though? I don't think I have a temperature scanner on Monsat 3. I sure don't. Okay, yep, I couldn't have been, so I was I was good. As we were. I want to watch for Monsat 1 to cross into this zone while also watching test vehicle. So that, that will probably be the only launch of that one vehicle I used. It was um, sketchy, oddly stable, but in terms of thrust levels, just horribly sketchy. And I might have to come up with something more practical. Although I did want to have at least one Koryalev cross on uh, on this channel. So it'll be uploaded to YouTube and it'll be on my YouTube channel and um, I'll have at least one. Can't be a space program without a Koryalev cross. Okay, now this might be coming up on the zone I was interested in here. It's looking like it's going to get close. So I'm going to at least switch two months at one. Which is going to force me into a slower uh, slower time warp. But just make sure that it's um, doing its thing the way I want at extremely low altitude. Let's see. Let's see how close it comes. Again, also watching our test vehicle. It'll still have several hours once it gets to that um, sphere of influence of the moon. Um, it'll still have several hours before it is actually um, to its para apps for, for burn. But at this point, I don't know if I'm going to bother to try and use an extra bit of fuel in that stage. Or if I'm just going to let that decay. So yeah, this one might be a little far from this point. I don't think it's going to reach. Yep, does not reach. So we'll have to wait one more orbit. And see, hopefully it doesn't fall in between two orbits like what happened last night. So this is the only satellite I intend to get uh, this low in orbit. A little bit of a wait here. Again, the time warp doesn't really let you do much. It only lets you do 10 times warp when you're this close to the surface. You're my favorite. Oh my god. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, if we're going to be waiting a while here, um, I'm at least going to get in nice and close 
and get a view of us zipping over the surface. And then uh, very shortly we'll be able to go to our three satellite stack and do our lunar burn and get ourselves into um, lunar orbit and start setting up a more more effective comms network for the moon. And hopefully we can do a moon mission sometime very soon. I was hoping tomorrow, but I don't think the launch vehicle we made today for the satellites, while it did technically work, I don't think it's very wise for our moon mission. And like I said, I still need to unlock um, the larger heat shields. It's one thing I didn't anticipate I needed. The whole time I thought I had heat shields that were the correct size. I dig it. I gotta like look close up my chat and so really see. Those are game controllers with wings and a halo. This is just a painful delay. I apologize for this one. I, this was driving me crazy the last two nights trying to get all these temperature scans. Although this time looks like we're finally going to get it if we can just stay in comms. I'm looking at you, Munsat 2. Don't you fall out of comms range. Oh, it, it kind of already did. Munsat 3. Munsat 3 might have our back. <laughs> You're god of this game and my favorite streamer. <laughs> Here you go. I'm no Scott Manley. I'm no Scott Manley, that's for sure. That man. I don't know how he does the thing he, the things he does. All right, here we go. Munsat 3 looks like it's going to be in position. Perfect. My god, I might actually close out. Okay, it is kind of like still going. Just get me close enough to take that one temperature scan. Let me close out that contract. Alright. Scott Manley's KSB videos are very good. I actually, um, my little Delta V calculator I was using. Yes! Yes! Oh! That one. And that is contract completed. That is a whole contract down. Thank every possible god entity everything for that one finally happening. Now, there's still these ones I need to get. But it'll be uh, many, many rotations till we come up on those again. When we're almost a full 90 degrees. So, it'll be another... Let me see if this is tightly locked. It'll be another couple days, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to move on. Now, where's our... Um... Aha! Perfect. Launch test vehicle is in lunar... With lunar influence. Lights... And we are one hour and 14 minutes from our anticipated maneuver. So the question is, what's going to happen with this stage if I use this stage as much as possible to circularize? Well, apparently it's going to get me completely into orbit. No? Yes? No? No, it is not. It is going to kick me out of lunar orbit, and then put me on a non-decaying orbit. Should we count Pluto as a planet? I feel like them calling it a dwarf planet is sufficient in my mind, but then I would still kind of be like, okay, yeah, but you, you are calling it a planet. It is, I get it, it's a small planet. We don't call 
We don't say that dwarves aren't people, right? I mean, unless you're talking fantasy RPGs and the, and the like. That's my take on that. Alright, so I'm gonna just not use the fuel on this, I think. I think I'm just gonna literally let this booster do its thing and return to Kerbin. So what I really need to do is start lining up satellites. So let's do... Let's do this first one. Now thankfully, because this is all on a return trajectory to Kerbin at the moment, these little stack separators won't become space junk, so that makes me feel a lot better. And what I'm going to do... I'm going to set this one... Start its burn a little early. I'm gonna get rid of this maneuver node. Okay, and that's gonna give us a really crazy apogee at the moment, but at least we'll be in lunar orbit. And it's well within our delta V capability. So let's go ahead, let's warp to right before that maneuver. Coordinate the launch of three satellites from this all at the same time. Of course, we finally get to rename this its proper name. Munsat 4. Got a 21 second burn, so I'm going to wait till 10th from the actual maneuver node, and then uh, that'll level out our, our burn across, across our intended point of adjustment. Very weak engine on this, so that is going to be the best we can do. I was using Terriers for all the other satellites before. And those we could get away with some two and four second burns. I could fast forward this a little more. I need to be so cautious all the time. So again, about 11 seconds before. 10 or 11 seconds, somewhere in that range. And we're pointed right... different idea on what I'm going to do with all the, the low curb and orbit stuff um, that might be entertaining but there is uh, another part I'll have to unlock first so we'll, we'll quite, a, quite a few bits of science away at this point but we will get there and I have a very entertaining idea for, for what we'll do so this one's now in orbit and um, we are going to just um, can we still toggle over? I can't toggle over. It's too far away. Switch to the test relay. Alright. We're going to start our second launch. Let's see. Control from here. Stage it off. Engine. Now, 
Now we can plan our maneuver. Let's get rid of that and make a new one, just so I know it's gonna work right here, maybe? Oh. Sensitive mouse, it's being weird on it. Okay. That should just about do. I don't really want to go crazy yet, because I haven't decided how I'm going to get all these situated. And the higher my orbit goes, the easier it'll be to make the inclination change later. So let's not go too crazy. So this will be a 19 second burn. This will be less than the last one, since we're going to be closer to perigee. And we can now rename this one as it's supposed to be renamed. One sat five. And real quick, I'm gonna switch back to uh, our last one and get this guy ready as well. So there we go. Separate. Engine. Small, small, small correction, just so we don't hit this separator. And now all that debris will actually fall back to Kerbin, as I intended. So that makes me happy. This last one will do the maneuver right at um, Perigee. I don't want to go too crazy here. That should do nicely. Look at our satellites! Going and doing their thing. It's so lovely. Booster down there. Alright, I'm done marveling at the view. Time to get down to business. So we want, again, between 9 and 10 seconds or so. Pretty close to that 10 second mark like last time. And that's where we'll start our burn. There it is. Good enough. Let's get into orbit. Now we can go to the one in front of it. Alright, this one has a 21 second burn, same as the first one actually. So I'll, I'll chalk this one up as um, technically a partial success. I am getting three commsats uh, where I wanted them. But uh, I was really hoping that launch vehicle was going to be um, at least somewhat reasonable for a manned launch to the moon. I mean, we did just launch a 15-ton payload into orbit to then do a lunar transfer and then get three satellites up. So I, I guess I really shouldn't complain. Really, about 10 tons of that was truly payload. Each of these satellites is about three tons. Plus fairing and all the other stuff. Extra separators and everything. And of course, as always, for anyone who missed that totally sketchy 
low thrust launch. You can always catch it on YouTube the following day. And like I said, my only Corey Love cross so far. That makes me makes me happy to have at least one. Man was a genius. Beautiful. I dig it. So now we got to start working on getting these uh, into their separate polar orbits. I'm not going to wait for the usual um, Apogee to do this. Because I have a lot of um, Delta V on this. So I don't have to just terribly worry about it. That node's doing something funky. I don't know. I don't know quite what that one wanted to do there. That was a little bizarre. Let's um, let's tip this way and then shrink orbit. Yeah, there you go. Do I want to do these polar or do I want to do these um, Molnia style? Hmm. I guess um, sticking to high orbit's fine. Let's leave them at 1.4 million above, I think. So let's circularize that a little bit. Oh, almost had it. There we go. It's gonna mess it up as soon as I start to angle it a little more, though. Yep, of course it did. Turning into a complicated maneuver. Just slightly overcomplicated, no biggie. It's not that bad. It's only a 31 second burn. So let's just um, let's just get ready for it. Forget it. Let's do it. I actually really like this new satellite design because I can get a. Uh, 133 liquid fuel on this instead of um, instead of I was getting the old one, which I think was like uh, I think it was only two thirds of that. What are those little ones? 45 or something like that? And then I've got okay, two of those. Yeah, I think it's 90 instead of 133. And they weigh the same, and they're cheaper. And apparently they launched very well on a stack of three. So 16 seconds to burn. Or to node is when we'll burn, I should say. Morning. 
Oop, and I overdid it. Ah, uh, it's making my jokes instead of doing maneuvers. It's fine. A little correction. A little correction burns never hurt anybody. There we go. Very nice. We got one polar orbit set up. Now, next satellite. So we can wait a little longer. Because we're going to want that. Say 30 degrees. So maybe like right there. That looks pretty solid. Perigee's a little lower than the other ones, though. Yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, that's kind of almost a Molneo orbit. I don't need to do that. I could do those burns afterwards. Those correction burns can happen to, to get specific altitudes after we've already done our adjustment. Certain combo maneuvers just get complicated. Alright, we're gonna point that where we want it. We'll come back to that in a second. I'm gonna go set up a maneuver for Munset 4. Just make sure it's got um, eyes on the sun a bit. Since that one's gonna be a while till we do its maneuver. So the other two we're doing there, we're doing right there. So this one I want right here. Now I could save fuel and do it way over here, but I don't want to wait that long. And like I said, lots of Delta V on these. Landed, okay. That should give us some pretty good coverage. Plus we got our other weird orbiters. What is the Xperi doing in lunar orbit? When did that happen? At some point Xperi ended up in a uh, lunar capture. Uh, okay. <laughs> the moon was feeling very spoiled and decided Xperi needed to be there. Wow, that is messed up. Huh. Alright, let's go back to uh, Munsat 5. Let's... Time warp to uh, our maneuver. And at some point, sometime relatively soon, hopefully, we can go back to the Aduna probe and the solar satellite that are still about 100 days away from their next maneuver. Alright, let's just warp here. Okay, we're at least pointing to the target correctly. We have solar... Yep. We have solar power. And we are ready. Fast forward in. Not that fast, maybe. Maybe faster than that, though. There we go. So 16 seconds in is where we start.
correction. Cool. That one's good. Cancel our node. Now, switch to the four. We just, again, time warp to its node. How's the, what's that one doing over there anyway? Oh, it's got a long way until it comes across these again. It can't get these ones because they're they're too high up. But uh, but this one, this one is a below 8.6 kilometers, so I need to keep it low until it gets there. So we'll just keep going with our maneuvers here. Keep passing the time. up. This one doesn't have as good comms right now. That's surprising with all the satellites around. Oh, it's because it, uh, oh no, no. You can see. Hey, Kerbin, why is the comm so low? Oh. It's reading signal strength to Kiosat 3 for some reason. It's got Kiosat 1 and KSC just fine. Bounce signal through relay, 31%. And transmit it and connect to the space center. So why is it being so finicky? It's, it's annoying. Get a little closer to maneuver. It's more like it. So 13 seconds to maneuver is where we're going to start. Pricing. Since we had to pay for the satellites anyway, in terms of the launcher pricing, we saved a lot of money on the launcher. It might be the way to do things. Stacks of satellites. Yeah, it does seem weird that it'd lock onto the weakest signal. I don't understand why it's doing that. I don't know if it's something I'm doing wrong. Could be. I tend to do things wrong every now and again. Most of the time. But anyway, now... <laughs> now with that launch, we got a few really cool looking uh, paths around the month. So we should have pretty much at all times radio coverage around the month. That makes me feel a lot better. T-Mobile comps logic. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's that. Ooh, look at the look at the signal strength going back to Kerbin though. I need a booster in there. I need a booster bad. Look at that. I need a stronger relay. Is what I need. Although these still have radio contact way the heck out here. So what's what the heck's up with that? Something's off. Something's not making sense. I think because some of these relays only have one or two antennas. Yeah, I know like the orbital relays for sure are weak. Kiosat might only have one. Colneasat should have four, I thought though. Yes, Colonia Sat has four. So I don't know why we're having these comms issues. I guess not issues, because everything's functioning. It's just terrifying that it's claiming that this is all weak coverage. 
Keosat 3 seems to have the strongest sense, uh, signal, but it's just because it's the closest. Hmm. It's mildly concerning. Especially, like I said, these ones way out here seem to just be doing dandy. So let's... Since we're talking about our long-lost Duna and solar probes, let's go check on them. Since all that time passed, I'll also uh -huh. check mission control. Atmospheric surveys of Kerbin... I don't like doing those. Those are tough in atmosphere. Subital, suborbital trajectory over the moon. That's interesting. Oh, our first min miss sat. Hey, oh yeah, I'm taking that contract. Oh lord, do I do I really do this? Conduct temperature surveys of moon. I've already got. Months at one, just circling. Just circling, waiting to collect these. It might be shared bandwidth congestion. I hope not. Because then just throwing satellites up as crazily as I do is going to stink. I'm not adjusting months at one so they can, they can go away. I've already rescued more than... I can hold for Kerman, so I really don't want to do those. Ah, uh, three million credits. That's it. That's all we have. Is three million credits. Uh, let's. Oop, nope, not what I wanted. Wrong building. This one. Uh, outsourced R and D. Now I'm going to do my 25% uh, commitment. So we'll take 25% of our funds income. And we'll start yielding science. One science for every 12,209 funds. That is not a lot. Is it more efficient and lower? Nope. More efficient and higher. So yeah, we're gonna go for 25%. Unless, unpaid research program set up cost 35. Nah, we can't afford that yet. That'd be crazy. These just keep making me cringe. Like, I want to do these, and I just think to myself, no, it doesn't seem worth it. I do have 3 million funds, so it shouldn't be a hard call. Can't be modified once activated? Does that mean I can't cancel it? I don't know if I like that. It's taking 25% of our funds. doing it okay it does let it let's cancel it completely okay Ooh, that had me a little bit worried but that should be fine I feel better now now let's see what we're gonna do we're gonna check we're gonna check out the Duda probe What's this guy doing? Not much of anything, I bet. I was trying to think about how I want to go ahead and start setting up these maneuvers here. It is on a, on a horrible uh, timed window to the point that I think Eve might actually be a better target.
Like, I could just do, like, a really aggressive burn. Yeah, this might turn into an Eve's Eve probe. Oh. Had a, uh... Yep, there we go. Have an Eve encounter. We'll totally have to stage to pull that off, though. I don't know about that. It's kind of rough. I don't have a ton of fuel once we stage. I'll be staging into this guy right here. And then that still needs to slow down enough to re-enter. One, this is poorly designed, and two, I did a really horrible launch window. I don't know why I did such a dumb thing. So let's see how we can do this with just this booster, like, just a little better. I really don't want to wait for the descending node either, so I'm trying to time a really awkward... Yeah, see, that's what's killing me. so impatient. I want I want to get this done sooner rather than later. So let's fast track to the uh, descending node by slowing down. Odd thing with orbital mechanics. You want to get there faster? Slow down. We're just going to take a gamble and we're going to hope that then later we'll be able to make a maneuver That'll put us into an Eve encounter rather than a Duna encounter. And with that, I'm going to just rename this. In the sake... In the name, I should say. In the name of optimism. For the sake of... Well, node in four days. I'm not going to time warp four days. We're not going to do that. We will check, though, real quick. On where are we? On sunset. I don't think which is which. Sunset two, I think, is the one that I want, since that's the only one in radio contact. Hopefully, that's the one we want. Yeah, it looks about right. It's got a node in. 101 days. Okay. Do I mess with the nodes and try to do something now? Probably not. Yep. It's got a very well-timed transfer in 101 days. So I'm not going to mess with that. It's going to go do its thing. That might be, that might be the stream for the night. That was a blast for sure. But, I think that's it. Because I really want to make sure I give myself enough time um, tomorrow to now work on a new launch vehicle. Because the one we had just won't cut it. This was just as nostalgic and wonderful as it is, just was not enough to do a real moon mission. Now if I got a much stronger engine to go here in the center, I think it'd be pretty doable. 
but right now I'm very limited on engines. I haven't been putting a lot of research into engines themselves. I could, I could theoretically put some thuds in there. What's their, uh, what's their specific impulse? 305 for a specific impulse in vacuum versus 320. It's really not that bad, actually. That maybe might be the saving grace of our, uh, of our little design here. Is it colliding? It looks like it's colliding. Um, well, I tried. I tried to salvage it. But no, we'll have to come up with something else. Wait, now, what I'm probably going to have to do is I'm probably going to have to take the, uh, the skipper and use that on some kind of rocket, a larger base, and uh, maybe some solid rocket boosters, like the, uh, the thumper. That's probably what I'm going to have to go with. And what I really want to do out of that is I want a scaled up version of our Gen 2 um, lunar transfer. So our three ton satellite launcher has been really reliable. This is excellent for getting a single satellite to to orbit in, on the month. Now, price-wise, 12750 Yeah, versus less than double, we just got three satellites up, so. This is actually a pretty good satellite launcher for the price, but um, God, this is just so painful. Watch, watch the YouTube video tomorrow at some point, and just watch it crawl, because that was that hurt. But all right, guys, that's it for tonight. Tomorrow, hopefully, get everything set up for a moon mission. I was hoping for a moon mission tomorrow, but it looks like it'll be on Saturday. Again, for anyone that's watching, um, it's every every day at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm throwing my streams the next day. So if you miss anything, don't worry about it. And that's it. Thanks, everyone, for joining.